And see, what the devil, though, will do is because he's crafty and he's used this weapon for a really, really long time. He'll make you feel fear and then he'll tell you that you're not courageous enough or you wouldn't feel the fear. No, 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 no. Faith doesn't make you not feel fear. Faith makes you walk through the fear. You have to understand that fear is never going to absolutely stop and you're never going to be afraid of anything. No, there will be situations that you feel fear in, but you have faith to walk through the fear. You have faith to walk and step on top of the fear and realize that it doesn't matter how I feel. It's about what God says. And the moment that you can get that reality, ooh, that's a good one. When you can get that reality, it's not about how you feel. It's about what God says. If you can live in that, if you can walk in that, you will be a bad, bad Christian, causing all sorts of chaos for the devil. God, God wants me to speak to you right now. He believes that you are going to fulfill the calling on your life. God believes in you is what he's wanting me to say. And I'm going to say it again because he wants me to triple down on it. He believes that you will fulfill the destiny he created for you. He believes in you. He believes where you are going. He knows that he's going to take you there step by step by step. And he has you exactly where you need to be. God, some of y'all need to know God's proud of you. He's so proud of you. He wants to continue. He wants to build you up. He wants you to know that he looks, when he looks at you, he's, he's a proud father. His heart's bursting with love for you. He, when he looks at you, he doesn't see what you did 10 years ago. He sees, he sees the, the white robes that he's clothed you in. He sees you as his royal, his royal children. He wants, he wants to remove the insecurities that we walk around with. We all got them, man. I got them, too. I know some people don't like the way I do it. And they say this or they say that. But you know what the Lord, the Lord says, as long as you do what I tell you, you don't worry about what other people say. That's right. And that's why one of the main reasons why I always am, am preaching about wanting you to have a, your own individual prayer life. Because when you're in constant communication with the Lord, you don't have to worry if you're doing the right things or not. Because you've been talking to him the whole time, so he's been guiding you. But when you only talk to him for the, the few minutes that you come up to the altar on a Saturday night, which praise the Lord that you do that, that's, that you can kind of get off track throughout the week. You second guess yourself. And then you come back a week later and you're like, uh, did I, was I supposed to do that? Was I wasn't supposed to do that? And he'll fill you in. But you don't have to live that way. You can be constant communication knowing that I'm going where he wants me to go. I'm, this is what he wants me to do. This is who he wants me to talk to. This is the job I need to have. This is the relationship I need to spend more time in. This, that, this, that, whatever it is in our life. Constant communication. And if you are not in constant communication, it's going to get so crazy, so distracting out there, the world is going to suck you away. It already, it already has, has been doing that. But it's hyping up in intensity. And these, these messages, you'll hear from all sorts of preachers, for people that are listening to the spirit of what God is saying. How is he directing the United States? How is he directing uh, his people? They're all going to say the same thing. That you have to stay focused every single day, every single moment, because the devil's impact is, is, is he's racking up the intensity because he knows his time is numbered. If you were here a few weeks ago when I preached about the small man's hand when Elijah said the cloud was coming, and, and we preached to him and we shared about how we saw the, we saw the breakthrough coming, we, we saw the miracles coming, and it was a small cloud. But then at the end of the story, this is what I want to focus on, is that Elijah said he had to run away from the cloud because the storm was going to be so heavy. So he lifted up his belt, and God gave him supernatural speed. 
and ran past the chariot. So what God is saying to you right now is that he wants to give you supernatural speed to recover all the things the devil has stolen from you. If you, if you, if you will grab your belt and say, God, I'm ready to go, what he's going to do is he's going to supernaturally put his right hand behind you and push you like you've never seen before. You're going to have so much breakthrough in your life. You're going to have so much victory in your life, so much healing in your life. It's not going to make any sense other than God had his hand on you. And that's what I'm saying. That's the season that we're in right now. That's the season that we need to be listening and praying to daily so you can get God's hand on his back on your back and he can push you to where you need to go. Oh, oh. He's pushing me. He's pushing me in the spirit. He's pushing me in the right direction. I can feel the fire. I can feel the anointing. I can feel the flow. I can feel that this is where God wants me to be. And when you when you can come to that re that realization and I know the devil's up in here speaking to some of y'all, well, that's because he's the preacher and that's his job and this, this, and this. No, no, no. The, the reason I'm sharing this is because this is for you to have. He wants you to go home feeling like that. He wants you to know that you're in the revelation, that you're in the right step, that you're hearing the voice, that you're moving, that you're anointed, and that you are, you've got that close relationship because it's for everybody in here. It's for everybody in here. It's just, are you going to take the time to do it? Are you going to take the time to listen to him? Are you going to take the time to pray? Are you going to turn the phone off? Are you going to put the TV away? Are you not going to go out on a Friday night? Instead, stay at home and read your Bible. Those are the type of people he has that close, intimate relationship with. Not the favorites. Not the holier ones. The ones who spend time with him. The ones who spend time with them. A final word. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on all of God's armor. So that you will be able to stand firm against the strategies of the devil. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies. But we are against evil rulers and authorities of an unseen world against mighty powers in this dark world and against evil spirits in heavenly places. So the Lord had me go after I was at the gym and then he told me to go for a walk on the beach and he said he was going to give me a word and, and I was there and, and, uh, and I was about this far into my sermon, right? So I, I've been reading all these scriptures and I'm all fired up and we're going to go get them and this, this, and this. And, and then he tells me, okay, this is what your sermon title is going to be. Do less. What do you mean do less? He said, yeah, you need to do less so I can do more. Amen. None of us up in here have the answer to what's going on in the world. No political leader does. No preacher does. No billionaire. No one no in Hollywood. No athlete can stop what's happening in the world or has the answers. We need to keep quit coming up with our own ideas of what we need to do. My own ideas, I get in my, get in my own way of where God's taking me. He wants us to do less by just quit trying to come up with the answers is what he's trying to say to us. Listen to him. What we're called to do in the most critical time of all of human history is to listen and then obey of what he says. And don't do more. Don't add your own things. Be direct. Be keen on your ears and your listening to the Lord. You want to pray for some? Say, Lord, pray for me to hear you more clearly. That's a great prayer to pray. You want to you hyper up your spiritual life? You want to hyper up your spiritual gifts? Pray that prayer daily for a month and see what happens. Every day, God, I just want to hear you more clearly. God, I just want to hear you more clearly. I, I mean, in the Bible, it talks about praying without ceasing, you know, so I'm, I'm trying to grow in that. So a lot of times I'll be in conversations with people and then... I'm, I'm able to listen, but I'm really, I'm also asking the Lord, God, what do you want me to say here? Because I understand that every single conversation I have, 
God has something for me to do in it. He has, he has something that he can use me as his instrument to point to him. To be a representation of him. To be a touch from him. A word of encouragement. Or just listening and, and, and caring genuinely. I'm going to keep going with the listening idea. Some of the most impactful conversations I've had now as a pastor and counseling people and sitting down and they share a lot of stuff with me. But a lot of times the most impactful thing that I do are not the things that I say, but genuinely listen and tell them I care and just show by my actions that I care about them. And pray with them about it. That's something we can all do. You don't have to be a pastor to do that. You don't have to be serving the Lord for a long time to do that. You can do that right here, right now in your life. And you'll start changing lives of the people around you by doing that simple thing. Because how many real people are really out there, bro? So you think about the people that don't go to church, right? And all they do is they go to work and they go home and they've got their family or they, whatever it might be. They're getting backstabbed everywhere they go. They're getting lied to. They're getting manipulated. People are trying to take advantage of them all the time. And then here you come. Just caring about them. Seeing how they're doing. Asking how they're doing. Encouraging them. That's it. Nothing else. No, no more, no less. Not, no ulterior motive. You'll be amazed at the impact that has on people. Because of the time that we're living in. It's so dark out there. Even our little light just being simple, but genuine, radical, radical impact. Some of you think that God isn't using you, but you're doing what I just described, and that's me having the Lord say through me to you that he's using you in a much mightier way than you give yourself credit for. Including some of you that are, are mothers or fathers, that, you, that maybe you're just stuck at home and you're not doing all the things that you th wish that you're calling you think is it is. But you know what? You listen and genuinely love your children. That's one of the greatest destinies and callings that there is. Shaping a young child. Because they're getting lied to and manipulated pretty much everywhere they go and everything they see on the screen isn't true. But they know they can always count on mama to tell them the truth. Don't let the devil discourage you where you're at in your life. You're exactly where you're supposed to be right now. And there are so many more things he has for you, but you understand that smaller beginnings are just because he's building the foundation to take you where he's really taking you. And that if he doesn't build the foundation, he can never get you to the heights that he has you called to be. Yeah. 